Moving on now, there seems to be no end to the U.S. debt ceiling showdown. Speaker of uh, U.S. House of Representatives Kevin McCarthy has expressed optimism for a deal on the debt ceiling, even as another round of talks ended with no signs of breakthrough. The two parties remain deeply divided about how to rein in the federal deficit, with Democrats arguing that wealthy Americans and businesses should pay more taxes. Republicans want spending cuts, on the other hand. Meanwhile, Democrats want to freeze spending in the 2024 fiscal year at the levels that were adopted in 2023, arguing that this would represent a spending cut because agency budgets won't match inflation. Now, the idea was rejected by Republicans outrightly, who want spending cuts. Biden, on the other hand, wants to cut the deficit by raising taxes on the wealthy and by closing tax loopholes for the oil and pharmaceutical industries especially. Kevin McCarthy has now come out and said that he will not approve tax increases. So the deadlock continues. Is the U.S. going to run out of cash soon? Uh, they've been in discussions for a while, so I'll go up and see the case. Are going to get a deal today, do you think? We could have got a deal 97 days ago. So. Does a deal look likely today? Don't know yet. We'll see mm -hmm. where we are. Are you going to the White House again anytime soon? I don't have, I'm not scheduled to go okay. to the White House. Just, you seem pretty far past your need a deal by the weekend, need a deal by yesterday. I mean, where are we on deadlines? We're not there yet. So, I mean, it's it's difficult because you've got to be able to, you take a couple days to write the bill, then you've got 72 hours here, then you've got the Senate to act. I mean, this is why all the way back in February, we wanted to have an agreement well in advance. And fortunately, Republicans have passed the bill. Otherwise, think of where we'd be today. Talking with the President Biden, you've been yeah. meeting in person. Have oh, you talked yeah. to him since your meeting last night? I, I haven't. The, the teams are meeting. I, I let them meet for a while before I talk to them. I know you don't want a short term um, stopgap measure, but if you need it. I, I don't think short term helps anybody. I think it kicks the can down the road. We're, we're in the midst, you know. I believe in life, you don't give up, you get through it. I mean, if you watch on the speaker's race, get it done and you'll be better off. I mean, where would we be if we just kicked the can down the road? It'd be right. worse off and we're working together now. We're finally meeting, so. With them, what happened with them? We're, we're gonna work until we get it all done. President and Speaker McCarthy had a productive meeting yesterday about the need to prevent a default and avoid a catastrophe. I'm sorry, catastrophe, pardon me, for our economy. They both reiterated that default is off the table and only way forward is good faith, uh, good faith, is in good faith and toward a bipartisan budget agreement. This is, uh, this is, this is, a, this is urgent, uh, but this is not political. This is about doing the work of and the business of the American people. This is something that we have said over and over for, again for the past five months that this is uh, this is for Congress to act. This is their constitutional duty. So we've been very clear, uh, uh, and we've been we've shown urgency from here. And uh, look, we think Republicans saying uh, that uh, that uh, the White House is not showing any urgency is a ridiculous question. Is a ridiculous statement for them to be making. And we believe they've been productive. We believe there is a space and an opportunity here to have a bipartisan, reasonable reasonable budget agreement that, again, the House and the Senate uh, can vote on and that we can get the business of the American people done. U.S. stocks ended sharply lower on Tuesday as investors grew more anxious over a lack of progress in U.S. debt limit talks. The Dow lost seven-tenths of a percent, while the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq both lost more than one percent. Another round of high-stakes negotiations between President Joe Biden's team and congressional Republicans ended with no signs of progress as the deadline to raise the government's $31.4 trillion borrowing limit ticked closer. The U.S. government could default as soon as June 1st, causing economic calamity. Investors are also waiting for minutes from the Federal Reserve's meeting in early May, due on Wednesday, to assess the central bank's next likely move on interest rates. As a result, the market is simply listless, says Lisa Erickson, head of public markets group at U.S. Bank Wealth Management. There's just a lot of concerns going on, whether it's going to be how the debt impasse is resolved to more hawkish Fed speak, in addition to the fact that we're past the bulk of corporate earnings. And really, while 
earnings were better and more resilient than expected, they really did point to a downturn in what's going on in markets. Among individual movers, shares of Broadcom gained 1.2 percent after the chipmaker entered into a multi-billion dollar deal with Apple to use chips made in the United States. Apple fell 1.5 percent. Zoom video communications dropped more than 8 percent after the video conferencing platform reported its slowest quarterly revenue growth. Helping limit larger losses, data from S&P Global showed that U.S. business activity rose to a 13-month high in May, lifted by strong growth in the services sector. The report was the latest sign that the economy held its momentum early in the second quarter, despite the risk of a recession.